Ford is going all in on hydrogen fuel cell technology. The automaker that holds a record for the best selling vehicle in North America with the F-150 is betting to electrify its Super Duty F-250 and F-350 lineup with not battery electric technology, but actual hydrogen fuel cells. Now, the reason why this is a big deal is because Ford is obviously not known to be a major player in the EV industry, even though it had a very successful launch of the Ford Mustang Mach-E in 2020. But now that it seems pretty clear that hydrogen technology prices are going to come down exponentially by 2030, it seems like Ford is making its bet on what it thinks will be the future of its super duty heavy trucking lineup. And based on some recent patents that were leaked around Ford potentially developing an innovative way of storing hydrogen underneath their cabs, it seems like the hydrogen electric F-250 is going to be coming sooner rather than later. But as usual guys, before we get into exactly understanding why Ford is doing this and what it means for the hydrogen economy, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, let's try to understand what exactly the Ford Super Duty lineup means for the company. Why is it such a big deal and how much effect does it truly have on Ford's top line business? And this right here is something that foreigners outside of the US will probably not realize, but Ford is known for their pickup trucks. Not the Mustang, not the Fusion, not the Focus, but their F-Series lineup, which is by far accounting more than 40% of their total sales in North America. As a matter of fact, in 2022, the Ford F-150 was the best selling vehicle by far in the US for the 40th consecutive year. To put that into perspective, one F-Series truck was sold in North America every 49 seconds. And by no surprise, the F-Series also happens to be the best-selling truck brand in the US for the 45th consecutive year. And no, the Ford F-150 is not the only truck Ford sells. If you've ever driven in the US, you probably encountered a bunch of Ford trucks that look nothing like the F-150. And that is obviously for good reason, because Ford sells two other brands, the F-250 and the F-350, which are massive workhorses that are used by nearly every industry in the US. This lineup is called the Ford Super Duty, which includes three trucks that Ford sells for commercial and industrial applications, as well as for the average consumer. These trucks are more than 25% bigger than your average F-150 can haul more than 50% heavier loads. This is a major advantage, which is a big reason for why Ford F-Series is so successful because of the wide product offerings. And this is where Ford is stepping in with their new hydrogen development. They see an opportunity to electrify their Super Duty lineup, not with batteries, which obviously offer big range anxiety and slow recharge times, but with fuel cell technology. Ford CEO Jim Farley last year himself said that he does not see electricity as the main source of power for Ford Super Duty trucks over the next few years. Although the F-150 Lightning has been somewhat of a success with its apprehension in the market, it is still a very tricky product to sell. As a matter of fact, Ford is facing some major issues with their EV battery supply chain with the Lightning, where they actually have zero inventory in most dealers. Because of the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack in the F-150 Lightning and Ford's very minuscule supply chain situation, they're facing issues with procuring the right components, the modules, the cells, and the packs to be able to ramp up production at a very high scale. As a matter of fact, they halted their production of the F-150 Lightning because of a battery issue for more than four days in their Michigan plant. This is obviously a very big deal because right now EV investments and production from competitors from Ford, whether that be Tesla, Rivian, or Lucid, are going up on a month-over-month -month basis. So any halt in the production line is going to cost the company a lot of money and a lot of investor confidence. It turns out that the issue with this battery was something to relate with their short-circuiting system, 
which caused a pre-delivery inspection to fail on one truck, which obviously resulted in a mass inspection of every unit that was coming off the line. And the good news is that at least in the short term, the company is indeed investing in the right direction to make sure problems like these don't happen in the future. They're just about to launch a $6 billion manufacturing facility where they're going to be making their battery packs in house. This is going to add around 6,000 new jobs. And this is apparently going to be the first carbon neutral vehicle battery manufacturing plant in the U S and obviously there's going to be some massive tax benefits for Ford to do this because obviously right now over 50% of the global battery supply chain is based in China with less than 15% in the U S and I'll be honest, that is a really scary figure. If you think about the geopolitical tensions between the US and China and the war we're seeing with data, security, and obviously TikTok, having control over the battery supply chain, which obviously is so critical in everyday lives and is expected to become an even more important portion of lives going into the future, is a very big deal. Not only are you going to be able to reduce cost for battery procurement for US based companies by reducing tariffs and import costs but you're also going to help secure the geopolitical security of the nation in the very near future. Just like in the cold war where we had a massive war between Russia and the U S for technological innovation, the battery supply chain is going to most likely going to be the biggest war for the renewable energy era. And that is exactly why U S companies investing in their own battery production is going to be absolutely critical. And guess what? As we know, hydrogen technology is also going to play a critical role right alongside batteries, and it is at a much more early stage than the former. This is exactly why Ford is getting serious about this, because they want to be the first ones at hand to invest in this technology for their own product lineup and not let China control most of the supply chain. Because you see, when it comes to hydrogen, there's actually more ways to distribute the supply chain than it being so concentrated on a single source, which is obviously lithium carbonate that we get from China. With a hydrogen system, you actually have a bigger portion of the weight and the space of the powertrain being taken up by balance of system and power electronics, not the battery or the fuel cell. From a size perspective, an equivalent 100 kilowatt hour fuel cell is going to be around one third the size of an equivalent battery and about one fifth the weight. This is exactly why Ford is investing in this technology and just patented this design of an under cab storage design to be able to supply their super duty lineup, which will benefit massively from the cost, weight and size savings. America is a business driven economy. And businesses are not going to deal with trucks or workhorses that provide them anxiety, range problems, and issues with charging infrastructure. Businesses care about practicality. They want to be able to top up their vehicle in less than five minutes and provide a range that is competitive to diesel and petrol. They don't want to carry around a battery that can reduce their payload and then also cause more issues down the line with maintenance and replacement which also obviously adds on top of the one to two hour time that it'll take for you to fill up a hundred kilowatt hour battery at a comparable fast charger. And it seems like to me, Ford understands exactly what they're trying to do with this situation. They're exploring hydrogen hybrid engines, fuel cells, and their own storage systems to be able to create a competitive advantage for their own homegrown systems without dependence on foreign entities. I wouldn't be surprised if in the future Ford files more patents when it comes to fuel cell power modules, power electronics, or hydrogen gas management. This step in hydrogen storage underneath the cab is just one step in the right direction for making their own hydrogen technology for super duty applications, which most definitely will carry over to other products from US automakers, which will overall benefit the heavier duty supply chain. What do you guys think? Is this the right move from Ford? And would you buy a hydrogen based Ford Super Duty? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.